He fed them with finest wheat and satisfied them with honey from the rock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And I tell you most sincerely how good it is to be with you. We've been having problems with the internet supplier, so I was here at six o'clock this morning, uh, ready, if necessary, to pre-record a Mass, given the time it takes to celebrate and then to upload, uh, needed to be early. It was a great relief at 10 to 8 to see the remote control screens come into life and the the various technicians uh, from home uh, take control of the cameras and the music, etc., and to know that we are gathered. It's interesting. Having had those two hours, I still found myself at 10 to 8 realising that I needed to do this and that in order to be ready. As we come to celebrate this Corpus Christi, we perhaps reflect that we're never truly ready. That each time we come to celebrate the Eucharist, each time we come to receive this extraordinary gift from God, we find ourselves ill-prepared uh, and rushed. We begin this Mass. We pause for a moment. We reflect. We ask God's mercy and a new beginning. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord your God led you for 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, and know your inmost heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you. He made you feel hunger. He fed you with manna which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not then forget the Lord your God, 
who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions, thirst, who in this waterless place brought you water from the hardest rock, who in this wilderness fed you with manna that your fathers had not known. The word of the Lord. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He established peace on your borders. He feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He makes his word known to Jacob, to Israel, his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ, and the bread we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that, though there are many of us, we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead. But anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. I was reading a little while back that people who have access to the remote control in the house, and that can vary as to who it is from one family to another, but if they have the remote control, they take an average of 20 seconds to decide if the next programme is of any interest. Which, given this homily is being live-streamed, I have three seconds or so left to attract your attention. Themes, that's why films or TV dramas often have a car crash, an explosion, a fight immediately, and then explain later what has happened. 
You'll notice it means that the titles of these various dramas are getting later and later into the programme. We've just heard in the first reading, the people want, as it were, to change channel. They've had their excitement. They were slaves, and Pharaoh had refused to release them to God. So the Nile turned to blood, the plague of frogs came, hail and fire, you name it, it happened. Literally, scenes of biblical proportions worthy of any great movie, and they have been given their freedom. They are led from captivity, led through the desert, given manna from heaven. Surely, all this has been enough to enable them to know once and for all that they are God's people. Wisdom should have shown them that that is their choice. And if not wisdom, at least a sense of gratitude for all that has happened. But that first reading began with Moses having to remind them, remember how the Lord your God led you for 40 years. He made you feel hunger. He fed you with manna which neither you nor your fathers had known to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone. The people are urged to recall, to remember that in times of desperation and famine, they have discovered what in fact had always been true is always true, that God was with them and that he fed them. Moses invites them to turn again to God, to allow themselves to be dependent on him, to live by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Each year, Corpus Christi invites us to reflect on this central truth in our lives of our need for the Eucharist. This year, it's in the context of our own desert experience as we are unable to gather as a Eucharistic community. A particular sadness that we've not yet been able to share the Eucharist for the first time with those who are preparing to be received into the church or with the first Holy Communion children. Not just a sadness for those people, but for us. Each year, seeing the children, witnessing the way in which they prepare with their families over the eight months of preparation, seeing the care with which they receive for the first time is an inspiration for us. It brings back the memory of that great event in our lives. In many ways, to experience each year the First Communions are for us that call of Moses to remember. This time of famine has given us time to reflect. Also, at an emotional level, the food that the world offers can sometimes seem attractive. Society encourages us in many ways to focus on what we want now, to seek what we think will give us that instant joy. Remote controls were offered of masks. There may be times when we might be tempted. But it's actually about whether or not we like the hymn or the homily. These days we're invited to recognise that what matters is that the host is our manna, which gives us food in the desert, which nourishes us for our journey to the true promised land. At the end of this Mass, in place of the normal blessing, there will be a few moments of adoration followed by benediction. A few moments to reflect on those words of the Lord to the crowd and to us. My flesh is real food, my blood is real drink. It turns out that the importance of this day, the importance of the Eucharist, the truth central to our lives, can actually be expressed in less than 20 seconds. My flesh 
is real food, my blood, real drink. As Moses invited the people to remember, so we are called to do this in memory of me. And so we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us ask the Father to send his Holy Spirit afresh onto the church, Christ's body on earth, on Pope Francis, Bishop Richard, and on all his faithful, that at this time where many are distanced from the churches, they may feel his real presence again in their hearts, until we are gathered around his altar. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all awaiting his sacraments, especially those to be received into the church and those celebrating their first Holy Communion, that they may wait faithfully and trustfully in God's endless love for each. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for world leaders that they may work together in overcoming warfare, hunger and disease. Especially we pray for refugees at this time that they may find sanctuary and a welcome wherever they may settle. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who live in want that Jesus, the bread of life, will be their sustenance and that we may bring that love of Christ in practical ways to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those beginning their lives. We pray for those born recently, particularly thinking of Jude yesterday, and for all those preparing for baptism for their beginning of a life of faith. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who've recently died from this pandemic and from other causes and for those whose anniversaries of death fall at this time, asking God to look kindly on them in his love. Lord, in your mercy. And we ask Mary to join her prayers with ours as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, 
Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, we bring you all our prayer, confident of the love you've shown us through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings here we present, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward, St. Pius, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other that sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. There's quite a list of notices that might be given at this moment And it strikes me that perhaps it'd be better to simply uh, invite you to go to the website where all uh, can be found and please reflect on the various opportunities that we have uh, for prayer, uh, for gathering uh, during this coming week. Time, instead of the notices, therefore, can be given to a few moments of adoration of the Blessed Sacrament here on the altar, which will then conclude uh, with benediction.
and Heme go sacramentum. Venere mucenui et anticum documentum novo cedat ritui. Prestet fide supplementum sensum defectui. Genitori genitoque, la sed jubilatio, salus ona virtus toque, sit et benedictio, procedenti abotoque, Composit laudatio. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of your passion, grant, we pray, that we may so venerate the sacred mysteries of your body and blood as to always be conscious of the fruit of your redemption, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be a holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her spouse most chaste. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. O oh, sacrament most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Sacrament,
sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. And at 6 p.m. this evening, we will have evening prayer and an extended Corpus Christi procession within the church and another time of benediction. I wish you a holy and a blessed solemnity of Corpus Christi.